Hey guys, what's going on? It's RC Knockout and I am back with another video. Now if you guys are new to the channel, my name is Nolan and in today's video I've got my Traxxas Slash 4x4 out. Now this right here is a Traxxas Slash 4x4 VXL that in the last video when I took this thing to the rock quarry, I burnt up the VXL 3 SESC. So I had to do something about that and my plan was to put the VXL 3 SESC from my Traxxas Slash 4x4 Ultimate into this machine, but I changed my mind. So this is what I ended up going with guys. Let me pop the body clips off and get this body off and show you exactly what I did. I was thinking about doing an install video, but it wasn't really much of an install. So this is what I've done right here, guys. Now this right here, if you guys watch the 100 mile per hour Traxxas Slash project, this ESC might look familiar to you because this right here is a Red Cat Racing ESC. It is basically a rebranded hobby wing. And as you guys can read on the side, it's waterproof SC8 RTR and right here, two to four S LiPo. That's right, this thing can run up to four S LiPo, guys. So I decided to pop this one in. I put a bunch of sticky tape underneath to hopefully hold this in place, foam tape, because um, obviously I couldn't screw it down where the original one was located. And then I had to do extension um, so I could reach actually into the receiver box. And then I just used a little bit more of sticky foam tape to um, attach it to the top of the receiver box on off switch. And right now I have got the uh, little jumper, so I'm just running one battery pack, and they do have Dean's connectors, which is a disadvantage. I have had this ESC right here go into limp mode when I was using it on the 100 mile per hour track slash project, but that's when I was going full out. So when I went fully pinned, this thing was hitting limp mode. But I determined when I used 100C discharge rate battery, then I wasn't having that issue. But um, I do eventually want to run 4S, but unfortunately guys, today all I have is a 3S pack, and the reason I'm not running a 4S is because I can't get a forest to fit in here. So what I did guys was I ordered a new higher battery strap down. So the higher piece of this right here, so it's basically you can put a taller battery in. So it's a taller battery tie down from Traxxas. It's a Traxxas upgrade part. So I'm waiting on that to come in. But once that comes in, then we're gonna be able to fit a forest pack. This pack right here barely fits under it. And this is that, oh, well probably because I have it on 23 mil, I need to flip this over. But this one still barely fits underneath it here. This is a three, a three cell pack. 4,000 milliamp, and I believe this one's a 60C discharge rate. Um, and this one actually has XT90, which has an adapter to run a Dean's connector. So we're gonna see running on 3S, will this thing have any limp mode issues? Just running it all through this one connector right here. Um, and hopefully I touched it in the house, the motor still seems good, so I think it was just the ESC that burnt up. And I used a little bit of tape because my antenna was broken. So what I'm gonna do guys, is I'm gonna go ahead, get it hooked up, and we're gonna jump right in this video and see how this thing performs. All right, I have got my controller turned on. And as you guys can see, this one has a super long uh, cables to it, which I've thought about chopping them because that could be causing, that could be one of the issues why this thing is going into limp mode, just because there's so much wire restricting that power because it's so long before it gets to the actual motor. But uh, since I don't think this is going to permanently be in this in this uh, RC, I don't want to do that. So, so we just got the one jumper here. Because um, normally you could run 2S packs, but there's no way I could fit two 2S packs in here unless I got the battery strap, the tie downs with the Velcro. Then I could fit basically any size pack in here. But uh, you guys can see what I did with the motor wires. Just use a little zip tie, use another zip tie here and here. And uh, let's go ahead and get this thing switched on. So three beep for three cell. And it is good to go. And I did recalibrate the ESC, so it should know exactly where the neutral full throttle and the full reverse point are. And I think that's all I had to do because I think I had all the other programs set how I wanted them with 100% brake and everything from when I was using this for the 100 mile per hour track slash project. So let me get the body on and then we're gonna go rip this thing around and see if this ESC will hold up. The other reason why I did not want to put the VXL 3S back in was I still have this 18 tooth pinion in. And I think that's the reason why I burnt up the other VXL 3S, the last one I had in this one because I was running too high a gearing. I'm hoping that this ESC um, has enough amperage to be able to um, keep the temps down enough so it doesn't burn up this ESC still running that 18 tooth pinion. Um, but the biggest disadvantage of the Hobby Wing ESCs is this one in particular only has 50% reverse power, which I'm not a big fan of that. So 50% reverse power, that's all we have. And let's go ahead and do a launch. Ready, get set, go! Ooh, I brushed that tree. Luckily I didn't have a direct impact on it, but I got some bark that I gnawed off the side of that. It, it doesn't feel like, I wonder what I have the throttle punch on this set. I, I might have turned it down for the 100 mile per hour track slash project because it doesn't feel like it has a ton of punch from the start. Like it feels like it has just as much power as the VXL3 has, but it doesn't feel like it has the best launch. Um, I'll show you what I mean. It just doesn't seem like 
but we are in grass, but here we go. Like, it feels like it takes a second for it to, um, I don't know, it just feels like the throttle punch or something might have been turned down. Maybe I did. But otherwise, it feels basically the same as running the VXL 3S. We're going to see if we run into any limp mode issues. I'm hoping we don't on 3S, and then if we don't, then we will uh, eventually run this thing on 4S. This thing should be a monster on 4S, guys. I'll have to check when I get home with my little program card, my Hobbywing program card, and see if um, see if uh, I do have the throttle punch turned down quite a bit. Nice. She's a ripper, guys. Track slash 4x4. Probably one of my favorite RCs aside from the X-Max. And this, this and the X-Max were my very first RCs, and they're my two favorite RCs. Ooh. It might have hit a low power mode. No. She just shut off. Let's go see what's going on. Hopefully that mode, that ESC isn't burning up. Let's actually get over there a little bit quicker. I don't want this ESC to burn up. It could be just geared too high even for this. Let's see. Let me get the body off. Four. Not showing any lights or anything. This is pretty hot though, and that's what I'm wondering. Running these Dean's connectors, I wonder if there's just too much heat going through the connector itself. Um, that's the one issue with the Dean's connectors. These wires feel all right. Motor wires feel all right. It's just right here at the connector. It feels a little bit kind of on the toasty side. Hmm, I wonder if I was running two 2S packs and running it through two different Dean connectors, if that would, uh, you know, make the heat, dissipate the heat a little bit. But then I would need something much larger in order to fit two 2S packs. But uh, it doesn't show anything on the ESC that it ran into any sort of limp mode. So I don't know. There's no lights on the ESC. So maybe I'll just turn it off, turn it back on. Like it still has power. Still has power, but... Like now it seems like it's at full power again. This grass is actually kind of tall too, so you guys can see the belly, it's rubbing up against all this grass, and whenever the grass is tall, the slash does not have the most ground clearance, so it's going to get slowed down quite a bit, and it's going to make things heat up pretty darn quick. Um, to be honest though, I mean the ESC, the motor actually feels kind of hot. The ESC doesn't feel nearly as hot, and the good thing is we do have a fan on this that is working. Also guys, while I'm letting this cool down, if you are enjoying the uh, videos I've been putting out, go ahead, give this video a big thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. Put a lot of time and a lot of effort into making these videos. So if you guys could take one quick second and give this video a big like, I would greatly appreciate it. It would really mean a lot. It tells me that people are enjoying the videos and they want to see more of it. Also, if you're not subscribed and you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and also make sure to hit that no notification bell so then you'll be notified when I do come out with new videos because there's going to be more videos to come. Uh, these. This tire right here ballooned up a little bit. I wonder if I got a little bit of water or something in it underneath the tape because I had taped up the inside of these tires. And uh, for some reason, this one, you might be able to tell on camera, this one right here looks like it's bulging a little bit. Almost as if it's saucered up, but then it didn't go all the way back down. Like it looks way more saucered up than this one. Can you guys see what I mean? You probably can see. Yeah, I can kind of see it. This one definitely looks like it's saucered out a little bit more. It looks like a bigger wheel and tire. But uh, we'll let that cool down a little bit, and then we're going to keep on bashing this thing. All right, guys, I just lost two of my body clips. I've been looking all around for them. I forgot I put them in the body, tipped the body upright to put the body back on, wasn't thinking. Now I only found two of the clips, and I don't know where the other ones are, and I don't really want to spend the rest of uh, the daylight that I have left searching for them. So we're going to run with two, one on the front, and one on the back, and hopefully that'll hold up all right. Bring it back this way. She gets a move on, that's for sure. Ooh! Ah, uh, I gotta go get it. All right, let's get it flipped back over. Like, that's full power right now. I don't know what's going on. Unfortunately, guys, it is hitting some sort of limp mode. Um, 
I'm gonna get it over here onto the asphalt uh, path over here and see if uh, we're still having issues or if it's just resistant from the grass. But even if it is resistant from the grass, I might have to change it up from this ESC. That's a bummer. I've learned kind of the hard way, guys, that Dean's connectors are not the way to go if you want a lot of power flow. But then again, maybe I also just need to use higher discharge rate battery and then this won't go into limp mode. Because if I remember correct, this is only a 60 or 65C. And uh, when I used a 100C on the 100 mile per hour track slash project, it did not hit a limp mode issue. So could just come down to not having enough Cs to push the amount of voltage that this thing needs. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can get a wheelie in. I don't know if it's gonna wheelie or not. Ready, get that, go. Ooh, no problem. But yeah, it just feels like it's kind of uh, bogging down a little bit at the start. I guess, bogging down. Sluggish, it feels sluggish to begin with. Get it turned around. She's quick. It gets a move on once it really starts gathering that speed, the thing really gets moving. So it's not hitting it on the uh, asphalt. I'm pinned right now on the grass. And there, it just hit it. I can tell it just hit it. So that's a bit of a bummer. Yeah, like it goes into a limp mode, but then it's right back up to full power again. Launch. There, they just didn't get any traction. That was kind of cool. There, just hit it again. Uh, bummer. I might just retire this thing for today's video, guys, but uh, if you did enjoy the video, please go ahead, give me a big thumbs up. Also, let me know. I mean, I can probably switch the connectors on it, even though I do suck at soldering. I suck at it, I don't enjoy it. I don't know if it's just because I can't get my soldering iron hot enough, because it seems like I can never get the, the iron hot enough to melt the uh, solder, that by the time I go and try to stick it on the wire, it never really soaks in the wire. Maybe I'm just bad at soldering, or maybe it's my soldering iron, or the solder I'm using. Um, but yeah, anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Look forward to seeing you guys in another video. Later.